Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we have another video for you all. This time we'll be building a 12 volt battery pack using these prismatic cells. These are the for, from the brand Clab, and these are 72 h And if you see the barcode is still intact, it's not been scratched. So the barcode is original and it states that it, has, it is 72 h cells. Now, I got this from a supplier who did mention that these cells were dated 2018 and they were sitting in the warehouse. If you see the bulges, the, the cells are slightly bulged on the sides. The main reason why this happens is because there's gassing formed in between the cells. Now, if you see, if I put all the cells together, you would see the uh, bulging. So it is bulged to an extent. Now, if you see, I can put my pinky finger inside it. Now, normally I don't recommend using bulged cells, but in case if you bought it, I'll explain how we could get this connected. Now I'm laying the cells on the side so that you'll get a better perspective of the uh, bulging. So if you see, we have almost uh, um, half a centimeter of gap in between the cells. So the main reason why the bulging forms is because if the cells were sitting down for a very long time, for a couple of years, then there's a formation of gas inside, or if it's over discharged or overcharged, these are the reason why the bulging generally forms. Normally, these cells also have a venting hole in case if there's too much of gassing, it'll vent out. And normally, whenever you connect prismatic cells, you arrange it in this way, where the positive and the negative are facing each other and it'll keep a buzz bar on top of it. Now, whenever you use these sort of cells and if you keep a buzz bar it'll expand and contract a bit so what would happen is that the buzz bar is going to be rigid and it'll stress out the terminal so instead of that what we'll do is we'll use diagonal connections now what do i mean by diagonal connection is that we'll arrange all the cells in one directions that is all the positive would be at one side and all the negative would be at the other side instead of the opposite directions and then will do diagonal connections from first cell to the second cell, second cell to the third cell and third cell to the fourth cell. So what would happen is that whenever you do a diagonal connection, I'll be using a silicon wire. So even if they expand, right, uh, the silicon wire would be able to take out the stress. So that's the reason why I would suggest using the diagonal connection. And then when you're building such a pack, I'll also recommend placing epoxy sheet in between the cells so that it'll give you an extra layer of insulation in between the cells and in case if the insulation of the cell goes out it doesn't cause any short circuit and it'll also give some rigidity to the pack so i'll keep all the epoxy sheets on the all the sides and then what i'll do is i'll do a zip tie uh, the reason why i want to do a zip tie is because just to hold the cells together and do a little compression not too much just a little compression if you don't have epox, I mean uh, zip tie, you can also use uh, filament tape. So now let me show you what do I, how I'm gonna make the silicon wire. So I'll basically be using eight gauge silicon wire, and then I'll be using these sort of copper terminals, and I'll crimp it using this crimper. Uh, having a good crimper is really necessary guys uh, because if you build a lots of battery pack a crimper is required and this crimper is from the brand Janison. Uh, i got this from amazon i have been using this for like almost one year now and if you see the head is pretty pretty large pretty heavy built and uh, this actually has this uh, spring loaded mechanism where it gives you a sturdy feel Basically, you just have to keep the lug in between the uh, the teeth and just compress it. You don't even need too much force to compress it. It'll, it'll this is a pretty handy device. I'll leave a link in the description below if you wanted to buy it. It'll be the Amazon link, and I'll certainly recommend this crimper. And then to connect all the cells together, I'll be using these sort of Allen bolts, and then I'll be using a spring washer. And then I'll be using normal washer because the Allen bolts that I got are a bit longer. So basically, I would also recommend using spring washers whenever you tighten any bolt so that they'll, there's a proper tension on the terminal. 
uh, spring washer gives you that sort of a, uh, pressure you can get this uh, sort of bolts from local hardware shop it'll cost you say around like four rupees a bolt four or five rupees a bolt not more than that and you want to make sure that you do not over tighten these terminals because these are aluminium so it will strip out easily so now if you see i have uh, zip tied the pack and i did add some foam tapes at the side so that uh, there's proper distribution of the forces at the sides but i decided to remove the zip tie because it wasn't giving a satisfaction feel so what i did was i just directly heat shrink the wrap i just use the heat shrink and i uh, put the batteries in and i just heat shrinked it and if you see if i keep the cells at the sides you'll see the wobble that's because of the bulging on the other sides as well you will see that sort of it uh, wobbling now this heat shrink has not over tightened these cells uh, there's not too much of compression you have little play now what I did was I did do a top balance of the cells I connected all cells in parallel and I used the buck converter to charge it if you haven't seen the video on how you use buck converter to charge it I leave a link on the top go check that out That's the spring washer I was talking about. So you got to use this Allen bolt and the uh, spring washer. Now, if you see these terminals are made up of aluminium, it'll strip out easily. I had been a victim of that where it strips out easily. And I have made a video on that. It's called as helicoiling where you could re reinforce the terminals. I leave a link on the top, go check that out on how you could fix any stripped out terminals of your prismatic cells. Now let me quickly show you the voltage of each cells. Since we just removed the cells from the top balancing, all the cells should be at the same voltage. 3.63, 3.63, 3.63 and then 3.63 as well. So pretty much the cells are top balanced now. Now we could go ahead and do a series connections of the cells. So these are the terminals that I made. Uh, I did use a spring uh, silicone wire. And I'll be connecting all the cells uh, in diagonally. So whenever you use these sort of uh, copper buzz buzz, right? Uh, there's 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 not going to be any play uh, for the cells to expand and contract it'll do stress out the terminals so this heat shrink and this diagonal connection would really help to ease out the stresses if not what happens is that you, you won't notice the stress it'll actually cause the internal connections to be uh, weakened and it'll heat up the battery and it'll damage the battery and the battery becomes useless thereafter and I'll be using these uh, BMS this is a 60 amp discharge and a 30 amp charge DALI 12 volt LIFO BMS So I'll just mount it on the side It's a no-brainer And I'll not be connecting on I'll not be explaining on how you should be connecting the cells uh, Or what the balancer wire should go where it should goes because you guys know the basics so I'm not going to cover that. And if you see, whenever I connect the silicon wire, right, it, it has a slight curve. The reason why there's a slight curve is because I did make an extra wire so that if the cells expand, right, the silicon wire can take up that expansion without a problem. So that's the reason why you would see a small curve to the wire. So we connected all the cells in series. Now let's connect the last cell positive. 
and the negative BMS. So we're connecting the B negative of the BMS to the battery. So done. So the battery pack is pretty much ready now. Basically, you just have to hook up a negative, uh, a positive wire, and then just arrange the balance cable, and we are all good to go. And I could have this used on an inverter or on my solar charge control to run any 12 volt appliances. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat shrink the cell put an epoxy sheet on the top and I'm going to make it look a little more professional. And if you see, I did put an epoxy sheet on the top and I had uh, fixed the filament tape and I did put another heat shrink on the on the battery itself so that it gives a rigid structure. And if you see the bulging has reduced a bit because we did add a couple of layers of heat shrink so you don't see the bulging. And I also did a discharge test of this battery pack uh, and uh, before that, let me just show you what the voltage is because this this is the next day that I'm picking up the video. Uh, if you want any raw materials of building a battery pack, you could check on the website that I, I leave in the description below. You could purchase it from there. So now the cells are at the resting voltage and I did do a capacity test using the 60 watt load. It took some time for me to do a capacity test, but this the testing came out to be 55 AH. Uh, I mean, I know that the rated capacity is 72 AH, but we only got 55 AH. That's because the cells are 2018 manufacture and these were sitting in the warehouse for a long time. So there's a gassing formed into it. So I expected it to not give me a proper uh, rating, but yeah, 55 AH it is. So if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, do leave in the comment section below. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, do subscribe to it. Thank you so much for watching, guys.